Welcome to part two of these recorded optics lectures. Uh, this time we'll be talking about the human eye. Here's a diagram of the human eye and it certainly has a lot of parts with complicated names, but I'm going to uh, focus, no pun intended, on just a few of these parts, the ones that have to do with how the optics of the eye works. Uh, the cornea is a curved window in front of the pupil, which is the opening through which light enters into the eye. And in fact, it acts like a lens. It does refract the light into the eye. Immediately behind the pupil, there is another lens called the crystalline lens, which um, also refracts light, but to a much lesser extent than the cornea. So most of the cornea, most of the refraction is done by the cornea, and the crystalline lens provides some fine tuning. And between them, they always manage to produce an image exactly at the back of the, right, of the eye, if the eye is, is normal and it's healthy, where the uh, retina is. And the retina is the uh, other component that I wanted to mention. It is, of course, the sensor of the eye where the image is actually recorded. So, uh, to review, most of the refraction takes place at the cornea. Uh, the lens provides some fine-tuning in order to ensure, as far as possible, that the image is correctly uh, focused on the back of the eye where the retina is. So, between them, the cornea and the crystalline lens act as a single lens, but with a focal length that is variable largely because there are muscles that can stretch the crystalline lens or relax it so that its focal length will change. So that regardless of where the object is, whether it's far away from the eye or really close to the eye, the image will always be formed at the back of the eye, at least ideally. But in practice, sometimes problems will arise and the image will not be formed necessarily on, on the retina, sharply on the retina. One such problematic situation is called myopia, or nearsightedness. And here the, uh, the actual shape of the eyeball may be distorted so that it's not exactly spherical, or the cornea may be slightly distorted so that it doesn't have exactly the right shape. So if we're looking at an image, uh, sorry, at an object that is very, very far away, it cannot be um, seen sharply because the rays will intersect not at the retina but slightly in front of the retina. And the effect of this is that beyond a certain distance, the so-called far point of the eye, um, objects are seen as quite blurred. So if you suffer from myopia and you're trying to read, for example, a blackboard, Mm, that is uh, somewhat far away, farther away than your actual far point, then the letters on the blackboard will be blurred and you won't be able to read them very well. So we can correct this by putting a lens in front of the eye, and uh, hence eyeglasses. And the idea of this lens is that then an object at infinity, which would be blurred for the um, unaided eye, will be imaged at the far point of the eye so that you will be able to see a sharp image. So if we uh, treat this lens with a thin lens equation, we see that uh, if the object is at infinity, then s tends to infinity in this equation, which means that 1 over s is essentially 0. And so f, the focal length f, is equal to s prime, where the image is formed. And we want the image to be formed at the far point of the eye. Now, the image is formed on the same side of the eye as the object is. So the image is actually virtual. And so if df is the far point distance from the eye, then the image distance has to be negative df. And if the focal length is equal to this, that means that the focal length is negative, and so the lens that we're using is diverging. So if you suffer from myopia, if you're nearsighted, like I am, and you look at your eyeglasses, you will see that they are thinner in the middle because they're supposed to be diverging. The other um, condition is called hyperopia, or farsightedness, and it's exactly the opposite problem. Here, your 
um, your eye should be able to focus normally on a nearby object, uh, at least not not closer than 25 centimeters approximately, which is the uh, the normal uh, so-called near point of the eye. So if you're holding something at 25 centimeters, uh, you should be able to read it well, for example, if you're holding a book. So the person who has farsightedness cannot see sharply something as close as 25 centimeters. They may see it uh, sharply only if it's at, let's say, 40 centimeters. And again, it's because of the distortion of the eye. It can be um, either that the eyeball itself is distorted or the cornea is distorted. Um, we, we cannot see the object uh, sharply on the retina. Instead, the rays will intersect behind the retina and so once again we see a blurred image. So, this time the c correcting lens is going to be different. The reasoning is this. The normal near point is, let's say, 25 centimeters. So, but the hyperopic person cannot see something sharply at 25 centimeters. They can only see it at sharply at a distance that is their near point, which is farther than 25 centimeters. So the correcting lens should take an object that is at 25 centimeters and form an image farther away at that person's near point. So again, in terms of the thin lens equation, what this means is this. We take an object which is at s equals 25 centimeters and we form an image at an s prime which is again it's a virtual image it's in front of the in front of the eye so s prime is minus the near point distance of this person and this formula tells us what the focal length of the lens should be now I have a question and once again I'm going to invite you to pause the video right here and think about the answer to this before you resume the video and check your answer with mine. And the question is, can you tell from this formula whether the correcting lens is a converging lens or a diverging lens and what do you base that choice on? Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Okay. So the answer is it has to be a converging lens because if we uh, consider the fact that the near point distance for the far-sighted person is greater than 25 centimeters, the thin lens equation tells us that the focal length must necessarily be positive. So if you suffer from hyperopia or um, uh, far-sightedness, then your eyeglasses will be thicker in the middle. And finally, I want to say a word about diopters, which is a term that you'll come across um, occasionally. Uh, this is the way optometrists refer to what is effectively the focal length of the lens. They don't talk about so much the focal length of the lens as the power of the lens, and the power of the lens is simply the inverse of the focal length in meters. And this unit is called diopters. So, for example, um, a correcting lens for myopia with a focal length of, let's say, minus 25 centimeters, negative focal length, because we're talking about myopia. The uh, inverse of minus 25 centimeters or minus 0.25 meters is minus 4. So that lens would be said to have a power of minus 4.0 diopters. All right, this brings us to the end of part two. In part three of these optics lectures, um, we will be talking about angular magnification and magnifying glasses.